Hey guys and welcome to AS Level Physics. Today we will be covering particle physics which is one of the later topics in the whole syllabus. This is also a subset of radiation and radioactivity which we will be covering later. So let's get down to it. So why do we study particle physics? Particle physics is studying the atmosphere, the environment, the universe at the very fundamental level. So for example, particle physics started way back when Democritus and Rutherford started thinking about what were atoms, what was the plum pudding model put forward by J.J. Thompson, so on and so forth. So particle physics has been around for a very long time, but only it got it only started at, at gaining pace when the first particle accelerator was invented at UC Berkeley by a professor. And from then onwards, particle accelerators have been at the core of particle physics. And they've had many uses, especially in... Uh, the medical fields where ionize, ionizing beams are used often for many treatments such as chemotherapy for cancer. So yeah, particle physics has been very fundamental to understanding the way the world works and that's why we will be studying it today. So fundamental particles, what we have usually studied in our previous classes is about the subatomic particles, the proton, electron and the neutron. However, now we'll find out that they are not the most fundamental particles and at the core of the way the world works and so over here you'll see a lot of new classifications there will be fermions, bosons, leptons, quarks so on and so forth so there are a lot of subclassifications you'll have to keep track of and I will keep highlighting what is crucial to the AS level syllabus and what is not so I hope you keep along. So fundamental particles are, as the name suggests, the building blocks of the universe. They are not made up of anything else. And so there are two main subdivisions of the fundamental particles. One group is one that makes up all of matter. They are known as fermions. And there are some particles that are known to carry force, which are called bosons. So for the sake of the syllabus, we will not be covering bosons. However, a, they are a very crucial and important topic for particle physics. For AS level, we will be only covering fermions, which consist of all matter. There will be a few more subclassifications sub coming up ahead. So what are leptons? Leptons are a subset of fermions and are again responsible for mass. They are themselves fundamental particles, that is, they are... They are they cannot be broken down further into any other particles. And leptons are also known as solitary particles. That is, you will always find them in isolation. They will not be grouped together or clubbed together with any other particles. They operate alone, alone and do not form groups. So there are six different types of leptons, which as you can see in the list is the electron, electron neutrino, muon, muon neutrino, tau and the tau neutrino. For the AS level syllabus, you need to know only the first two. However, we will dive, dive very briefly into the other four as well. All leptons either carry a negative or a neutral charge. You know from your previous understanding that electrons have a negative one charge and the electron neutrino now, as we will find out, has a zero charge. They are neutral particles. So the electron, muon and tau all are negative one the neutrinos carry a zero charge. All of them have negligible mass and are often taken to have zero mass. So quarks. Quarks are another subset of fermions which also come in six different flavors. What is so different about these quarks is that they do not carry charges in whole numbers. So as you will see here that there are six of them up, down, charm, strange, top and bottom. They have fractional charges. That is the up quark has a plus 2 by 3. Up charm and top has plus 2 by 3 charge. And the down, strange and bottom have a negative 1 by 3 charge. And that sounds very weird. However, we'll find out how we do not discover um, fractional charges in nature because as we we'll later see that they are formed in groups and found in groups. We will also be covering something known as antiparticles later, which is a very important aspect to particle physics. This table is crucial. 
a lot of questions in the AS level paper, both structured and MCQ, will con uh, will consist of you determining different charges of these quarks and remembering what charge each of them has is very very important. So if you want to note this down, pause the video and note each and every note this whole table down as it is very important for reference. Okay, I'll move ahead. So what are composite particles? Composite particles are particles that are made of more than one quark. And like other particles of physics, they have a name. So these are all, all composite particles, particles are called hadrons. So for definition, hadrons are defined as all particles that are affected by the strong nuclear force. For those of you who are not aware of the strong nuclear forces, the strong nuclear force is the force that acts in the nucleus of all atoms and keeps all the neutrons and protons cling, uh, they're stuck together so that they do not separate. These are one the, the strong nuclear forces are one of the strongest force, is the strongest force occurring in nature, and all particles that are affected by it come under the category of hadrons. So as in the previous slide, if you notice, uh, quarks were shown to were defined as not behaving individually, but to be only found in groups. These two categories, mesons and baryons, we will examine how they behave in groups. So mesons are made up of two quarks, one quark and an antiquark. We will examine what an antiquark is later in the presentation. And baryons, baryons are by definition made up of three quarks. These symbols are also very important for the purposes of the AS level syllabus. The entire quarks and antiquark table is important. However, in the leptons and antileptons, only the first row is important. You are not supposed to, it is not expected of you to know what the muon, anti-muon, muon neutrino symbols are. So the first row of leptons and antileptons and the whole table of quarks and antiquarks is relevant for the AS level syllabus. If you want, please pause the video and note this down. Also, just a quick rule of thumb. If the up quark is represented by a U, the anti-up will just will be a U with a bar on top of it. That means all anti-quarks or anti-particles have the same symbol as their uh, normal particle counterparts except with a bar on top. Moving ahead. So what are the anti-particles? An antiparticle is defined as a subatomic particle having the same mass as its normal particle counterpart, however, with the opposite charge. For example, the, the electron has a negative charge and negligible mass. It, its antiparticle counterpart, known as the positron, has a positive one charge and still has negligible mass. So when a particle and an antiparticle have the same mass, yet opposite charges. What's interesting about the behavior of these two is when they collide. When a particle and antiparticle collide, they're supposed to annihilate each other and emit energy. And in this case, as can be seen in the image, they emit gamma ray photons. This seems a little weird about how two particles, once they collide, form energy. However, if, you're, if you've seen enough science fiction, you'll remember the equation E is equal to mc square. That means energy can be converted to mass and vice versa. So when these two particles collide, they release energy, which obeys the law of this equation, E is equal to mc square. An interesting thing to note about this is that this whole process is reversible. That means if two gamma ray photons of the exact frequency and wavelength collide with each other, they would release a, they would release a pair of antiparticles. That means in nature, if there are any two photons of exact frequency and wavelength that is required, they can just release a pair of particle and antiparticle out of thin air. It's very interesting. Right. So what are these subatomic particles made of? So the electron, as we covered in, on, in the section for the leptons, is itself a fundamental particle and cannot be broken down any further. Protons, however, are not a fundamental particle. They are in fact a baryon, which as we examined, are consist, consist of three quarks. 
So the proton has two up quarks and one down quark. If you remember, an up quark has a charge of positive 2 by 3 and a down quark a negative 1 by 3. When you add plus 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3 minus 1 by 3, it gives a negative charge of plus 1. A neutron along the same lines is also a baryon and it, is consists, it consists of two down quark and one up quark. So if you calculate its charge, the charge will be plus 2 by 3 for the up quark and minus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 for the two down quarks giving a net charge of 0. In any previous calculations which you've formed in previous classes, the mass of the proton and the neutron is taken one atomic mass unit. So they have very similar masses in reality as well. There's only a very slight difference due to the difference of only one quark. Right? Because the protons are up, up, down and the neutron is up, down, down. There is only a difference of one quark between these two. Hence, they're nearly identical masses. So there are two more particles that are in the AS level physics. Um, one is known as the pi meson. The pi, as we examined, mesons are particles with one quark and one antiquark. So a pi plus meson has an up quark and an anti-down quark. An up quark has a charge of plus 2 by 3. But an anti-down quark has a plus 1 by 3 charge, whereas a down quark has a negative 1 by 3 charge. So an up anti-down will give plus 2 by 3, plus 1 by 3, or the total charge of plus 1. A phi meson is made of one quark, one strange quark, and one anti-strange quark. That the net charge is minus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3, a net charge of 0. Hence, the phi meson is neutral and the pi meson has a charge of plus 1. This is the overall layout of all the classifications we have gone through. Ignore the branch that goes into the bosons, we do not have to cover that. However, there are fermions which further branch out to quarks and leptons as we have examined. And again, you can leave behind the tau ones and muons under leptons, but the rest are all relevant. And if you ever get confused as to what the classification is, you can go through this table. If you want, you can save it or make it yourself. That's up to you. Pause the video and go ahead. Right, that's it for today. And I hope to be covered radioactivity 